I'm Stephen, USSR Robinson, and you're watching Sport Night Times. Papa! Steve, good to see you again. You alright? Not bad, how's everything going? Good, really good. Yeah. You've just done a few rounds of sparring this morning, how'd you feel for it? Fine, fine. Just yeah. sort of starting to, start to pick it up. I'm away to Portugal tomorrow uh, for a few days just to, just to unwind. Um, my mate lives out there, so just going to stop at his, just forget about training, rest my hands, rest everything up, and then camp will officially, officially start and really pick up for the next seven weeks, pick up the sparring, get in, get you know, three good spars on the week, and start yeah. to pick it up. So today was just a spar with Simon Validi, Jim, who will fight um, for Bjornsson next week um, as an exhibition. So he messaged him all, asked him if get a few rounds in some spot in the day tomorrow and then we'll look at picking it up from sort of not next week but the week after. Have you got sparring partners ready for your fight? Have. Uh, we'll be sparring, we'll be sparring Will um, on a Tuesday. Oh Will how yeah. Mickey on a Thursday and then from the 17th of June we're going to be going down with Nathan Gordon. Oh you are? Um, yeah. Um, we're going to be going down there on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Sparring on a Thursday, training in Pat Barrett's gym on the Friday, and then sparring on the Saturday, heading home and doing that for five weeks and even up on the fight. So everything's everything's in place, ready to go. So I'm looking, I'm looking forward to having a little break, letting, letting everything rest, enjoying the sun and then get ready to get ready to start the camp. Nice, nice. So your fight on July the twenty fourth in Manchester. Um, ha now it seems to be another fight on that day. Yeah. Disappointing for me, but I think it's I think it's disappointing for everyone. I mean, I, I think we're talking Fury Wilder three, by the way, for those who don't know. <laughs> um, I think even if you're not a even if you're not a boxing fan, I think that would have you know been tuned in all over the world. It, was, it, it probably was the biggest fight that happened. Oh, Joshua, yeah. In, in Britain, you know. And, for it to fall through last minute, very, very disappointing. Very disappointing on, on you know, on, on Tyson's behalf and on Johnny Wales' behalf to allow it to get to that and, you know, make the fans believe that it was happening and then throw a spanner in the works. And it, it, must be, it must be so frustrating for Joshua as well um, because obviously he, he expected that to happen. You know, Tyson, Tyson said Joshua was sparring for months and mm. months and months and, you know, but when the fight was finally made, it's like, there's now, there's now that spanner being held in the way of whose fault is it? Did, did Tyson know about it? Didn't he know about it? Did Johnny Well do it on purpose to get a payout? Does he want the fight? It, nobody knows. No, you know, nobody knows the politics involved. And it's just unfortunate for people like us who, would be a spectator and obviously I would be inspiring Joshua for that camp so it's disappointing for me as well. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna mention that because so there's a possibility of you going back because Ron McCracken said that uh, they're probably gonna bring you back for sparring. Um, I mean if you was say in Tyson's situation, I know it's difficult because we're talking millions here, but um, apparently according to Tyson, John Say Wilder wants twenty million to step aside. If you was Tyson, would you arrange to give him 20 million so he can go earn the 100 million against Joshua? Be because there's no guarantees that he's going to beat Wilder firstly, and, no. there's, no, and there's no guarantees Joshua's going to beat Usyk. Yeah, so the, the whole, you know, again, we, do, we don't know the, you don't know the ins and outs, you don't know the, it's, it's a lot, it's very easy for media just to type something up and make people believe, you know, that, this is this is what's happening. This is the situation. By taking something up and getting shared, that automatically goes into your head, and you know you, you, you just automatically believe it's true. Mm. And is there any truth to that? I don't. I, I can't say. That. I can't say there being truth behind that because if there was truth behind that, then 100% Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua and any him. Eddie Hearn knows that, Eddie Hearn would have put 20 million of his own money up and said, there you go, knowing that this, million, this fight that's going to come off is going to make him yeah. a lot more than 20 million off the back of it. 
you know, so ah, there's no I don't I don't believe in I don't believe there's any truth in that because between between the three camps, between Bob Allen, between Frank Warren, between many here, Fury and Joshua, you know, you, you talk you talk a billion pounds, if not more, between the between the five and network. For 20 minutes, it's, it's, it's a 10 out of me or you, yeah. pocket change. And if he was willing to step aside for 20 million, between the five of them, they would have, they would have sold. So there's more, there's more to it than that. But unfortunately, this is the problem social media has. You know, this is the effect social media has on the world. It's type something up, it makes everybody believe it's true, and then that's all people are talking about. You know. but it was Tyson that put it out he said that Wilder asked for 20 million but, yeah. uh, but he's refusing to pay it because he'd rather punch his face in so that's why I'm saying it's, you know where, where's the truth to that because if that was the case then if I was any here and Josh would say right we'll pay them mm. we'll pay I'll, I'll, I'm happy to make just 8 million for this fight mm. oh, oh, oh. Mm. well what do you think of um, Wilder's chances against Fury in the third fight? You think, outside of a puncher's chance, he's always going to have a puncher's chance, but what do you think of Wilder's chances of actually getting his belt back from Fury? Listen, Fury, Fury is, is, is just he's a boxing encyclopedia. Never, every single you know, heads off, the man knows more about himself than we know about himself. I remember, I remember the heads off between Pitchko and David Hay when he was telling them things they didn't know about themselves, about pop, you know, spawn partners that had been picked down off, fighters that had been beat off, what rounds were beat off, what shot were beat off. The, the, the man is just unbelievable. And when it comes to what Tyson needs to do is not switch off, you know. He needs to he make sure he stays on because that left hook that he got caught with where he went down was often just, you know, slipping, leaning forward and it was just a, it was just a quick, sharp left hook that caught him of him leaning over his front foot as he was slipping shots because he got too complacent. And unfortunately, as a, a, there's no denying Johnny Wilde, it's hard. Molly Connor right or not, he still hits hard, you know. We've seen against some of the Ortiz, we've seen against some bigger names. So, the, the man uses his leave as well, and he's got a new coach. Is he boxing better? You're seeing highlights shared, you know, via Instagram and social media, and he looks like he's, he's, he's boxing better. But what John Lee Wilde has to do is stop with the shit, stop with the excuses, admit that he got beat off the better man over two fights, regardless of the draw, admit he got beat, and look, you know, it, it redeeming himself, rather than, rather than still saying he's walked up spying. The you know, suit was too heavy, he was, he, his bicep was torn, there was no padding in the gloves, just, just admit to feet, pull your hands up, say, yeah, I got beat, but watch what happens in the third fight, and use that as ammo. Yeah into where you're going to go next. But I think the whole thing's been a disgrace, how it's, how, you know, and I think the whole thing's just been a mistake of boxing, to be honest. And the guy, Dana White, hit the nail on the head, and he, he, he done a statement the other day on one of his podcasts, and he said, you know what it is? He says, this just proves UFC is bigger than boxing because this wouldn't, wouldn't happen in the UFC. Now, I don't agree with that, but, you know, Boxing's my sport, but he says that the politics within boxing, there's too many belts, there's too many different promoters, there's too many, you know, things going on for to make the big fights, unfortunately. Whereas in the UFC, that doesn't happen. Do that way, do that way. You're right about that. Something needs to happen in boxing, but is boxing too old now to change? I don't know. Uh -huh. Politics will always be there. Uh -huh. and. Uh, Fury Joshua, you'll be looking, uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, Joshua Usyk, you're looking forward to watching that fight? Yeah, I mean, hopefully, hopefully get some sparring with Usyk off the back of that, do you know what I mean? With, with, with my size, my weight, everything similar to Joshua, working off the, the one-two, the other cuts, both, both 
being part of the both being part of the England team, the JV team. So if I could get some sparring with us off the back of that, if I could get some camps in off the back of it, it then you know it'll be it'll be great. It's gonna be a good fight, but I can't I can't listen, Usyk is a phenomenal, phenomenal fighter, as is Lomachenko, the, the footwork of them both is, is you know next level. Can I say can I see him doing anything against Joshua? I don't think I don't think he's got I don't think he's got the power to knock Joshua out. And over 12 rounds, Joshua, I think Joshua had been too strong, too powerful for him. You know, he was, he was to him, him versus Chisora was quite close, so I can't see him doing anything. I can't see him doing anything with any of the top heavyweights. I would have really, really enjoyed to see him versus Joyce. Yeah. I would have liked to have seen that to see where his level is and see where he was at. And to see, you know, if he put on a performance against Joyce, then. Then yeah, he is, but then what's his chin like? What's his chin like if you get him hit off these six foot seven naturally eating stone men? You know, is he is he capable of taking you, know, you don't you don't know. But once we'll we'll see come you know, August. Do you think that uh, Joshua's chin is underrated? Because obviously he got hurt by uh, Ruiz, which was like a temple shot, but he's taken some big punches. But yeah, a lot, but yeah, a lot of people see, seem to think he's got like a glass jaw. Listen, everybody who's sitting on the on the laptops or sitting on the chairs with a kind of Stella, you know, <laughs> <Hello>. the tennis margarita <laughs> on the side, see he's got a glass jaw. It's, it's, it's easy to see, isn't it? It's, you know, people have, people have questioned my jaw. People have said, well, uh, you know, what, what can he take a punch? Can, and, and you, you see it on YouTube, you see it on social media. You, you, you know, he's shy, he's slow, he's robotic. You're always going to get that, and Joshua's always going to give you because of the Ruiz fight. He's always going to be known as having a weak jaw. But listen, you're getting hit off somebody 80, 90. He took Bisco shots, didn't he? Yeah, <laughs> and he took he took what Johnny Wilder as well. Sorry, did he wait? Yeah, he's left over. Yeah. The hardest hitting blow to you know in heavyweight boxing. Took what, took his shots. Yeah. So. Has he got a glass chin? 100% not, no. I don't, I don't think anyone, even even David Price hasn't got a glass chin. He's got somebody, you know, does he, does, he, does he put his foot forward? Does he leave his chin out? Does he leave himself vulnerable? Yes. That, but that's a total different... That'd be good for you, David Price, wouldn't it? It would, it would. I mean, I think he refused calling him out. Yeah, that's what's happening now, Peter suggested it's not. Ah, okay, okay. Um, but yeah, it would, it would definitely, de two, three fights time, it would be definitely something I would I would like like to have. Somebody like him, somebody like Nick Webb, so, you know, to save Webb, Sokolowski. But let's get let's get a few six rounders out of the way, let's get this rust off from not fighting for four and a month, and then let's see where we're at. Exactly. Slowly does it. It's not about now, it's about the future. Yeah, yeah. Mm. All right, spot on, Steve. Thanks very much Thank for your you. time. Cheers.